Here's what I'm going to discuss in this video. First, I'll review atoms, then a bit about element math, followed by a short review of isotopes. Finally, I'll introduce ions. What are atoms? Atoms are the building blocks of matter. By understanding how atoms are constructed and how they interact, we can understand a great deal about the materials which make up our amazing world. Everything we feel, see, and taste is made up of atoms. Everything! It takes millions and millions and millions of atoms to combine into something large enough for us to notice. Such as that strand of hair in my sweater. Ah! What is it doing there? Although atoms are divisible into smaller particles such as quarks, atoms are still important because they are the smallest piece of matter we can divide and still keep the chemical properties of the matter. Take a lump of coal, for instance. You can divide the coal, piece of coal into smaller and smaller pieces until you get a carbon atom. These single atoms will still have all the properties of carbon, distinct from all other types of atoms such as oxygen and hydrogen. If we break the single atom of carbon further, however, we lose the chemical properties of carbon and are left with random quarks, which will rapidly reform into another element. An atom, then, is the smallest piece of matter that still retains the properties of its element. An element is a substance consisting of atoms which all have the same number of protons. Remember that? Number of protons define what element it is. At 75%, hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe. This is the universe. The Earth's crust, on the other hand, is oxygen is 27%. That's the crust. It's combined with other things, such as silicon which is 28 percent that's what oxygen is combined with the most the main particles that compose an atom are the protons the neutrons which are neutrally charged and electrons and of course you remember that the protons and neutrons are found in the center of the atom the nucleus where are the electrons found orbiting in the electron cloud surrounding the nucleus Recall that we discussed mass using either mass number, which is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons, or we can use AMU, which is the atomic mass unit. We could also use grams, but what a pain. Look at that mass in grams on this table. Would you rather go around saying 1.67 times 10 to the minus 24th all the time? No, it's so much easier to say 1 AMU. Despite the size difference between the proton and the electron, the electrons pack just the same charge. Protons are positive and electrons are negative. And notice that the AMU for electrons is so small that we don't generally even print the mass number for an electron. We just ignore electrons when talking about mass. Here we have mass again. The mass of an atom comes from particles in its nucleus, which are the proton and the neutron. The, the electron is so small we ignore its mass. Think about a textbook and a paper clip. We've gone to online textbooks to reduce the books you are toting about. Compared to one textbook, one paper clip is not going to break your back. Here's some beginning element math. You've seen these before. The atomic number, the number of protons. Mass number, number of protons plus number of neutrons. For a neutral atom, that's where the positive charges in the proton are canceled out by the negative charges in the electrons. Therefore, for a neutral atom, the number of protons equals the number of electrons. I get a lot of questions about why the electrons don't just fly off into Never Never Land. Also, if like repels like, why don't the protons, which are packed together in the nucleus and they all are positively charged, explode apart? What holds these subatomic particles together? The answer is that there are two fundamental, and that's the name of it, fundamental forces of nature acting on the subatomic particles holding them together. The electromagnetic force and the strong nuclear force. And the strong is what the name is, strong nuclear force. We'll talk more about these forces of nature later, but be aware that they exist, they have very definite definitions, and are very, very strong. Isotopes, you recall, this is all review, isotopes, atoms of the same element that have different numbers of neutrons. Isotopes are identified by the name of the element followed by its mass number, such as carbon-14.
Hey, that wasn't the drum roll I was looking for. I'll have to work on that one. Ah, uh, continuing right along. Ions. An ion is an atom with a different number of electrons than protons. You start with a neutral atom and then either add or subtract electrons. The resultant atom is called an ion. Ionize. To take away from or add electrons to an atom. The process of taking away electrons or adding electrons is called ionize. When all the electrons have been stripped from an atom, the atom has been fully ionized. This happens quite frequently with hydrogen atoms. Plasma, which is the fourth and most common state of matter in the universe, is gas heated so high that the electrons leave the atoms, leaving behind positively charged ions, also called charged particles. This picture is from Wikipedia's plasma entry. The colors are the electrons losing energy and recombining with the ions, the atoms that they were once part of. Stars are masses of ions held together by gravity. What happens to the charge of an atom if you add an electron? The atom now has more electrons than protons. What type of charge will it have? Think about it. It has more electrons than protons. It's going to have a negative charge. What happens to the charge of the atom if you remove an electron? The atom now has more protons and electrons. What type of charge will it have? Well, what type of charge do protons have? Since the atom now has more positively charged protons than negatively charged electrons, it will become a positive ion. It takes a lot of energy to remove a neutron from an atom. A lot of energy. To remove an electron, not so much. When you add salt to water, it naturally forms ions. One electron from one atom will transfer to another atom. The, the atom that received the electron is now a negative ion. The atom that lost the electron now has more protons and electrons, so it is called a positive ion. Since most of the space of an atom is from the electron circling it, what do you think happens to the atom that lost the electron? The atom in the center is a neutrally charged hydrogen isotope, which means it doesn't have a neutron. We don't have to say neutrally charged, do we? No, because the assumption in science is that the atom is neutrally charged. It has the same electrons as protons, unless we say otherwise. But since hydrogen atoms are so often found in nature missing their electrons, not to mention their neutrons, they usually don't have the neutrons either, saying it is a neutrally charged hydrogen atom highlights that this atom has the same number of electrons as protons. So you start with the atom in the center. If it loses its electrons, it becomes the particle to the left, a positively charged hydrogen ion. Positively charged particles are also called cations, which we will get into in another unit. Notice the size of the atom. Has it gotten bigger than the center atom or smaller? It's gotten smaller, much smaller, because the electron and don't forget, when we said the size of an electron, we showed that football stadium. If you could blow up a nucleus to the size of the P, where would the electron be? Way in the outer seats of the stadium. So if we got rid of that outer seats of the stadium, all we're left with is the P. So it's gotten smaller, much, much smaller, because the electron is no longer circling the nucleus, providing the outer shell that formed the atom. You've cracked the egg and are left with only the yolk. How about the atom on the right? It is formed by adding an electron from somewhere, these don't appear out of nowhere, from somewhere to the neutral hydrogen isotope. Well, the size, it's now much larger, though not twice as big because their orbits may overlap or form some other strange configurations in their efforts not to get too close to each other, but to get close to the nucleus. A negatively charged ion is called an anion. That's all I wanted to say in our ions video. I hope you enjoyed this overview of ions. If you need to, please watch this video again. Enjoy.